Welcome back. This week we're talking about veterans issues, especially here in North Carolina. Right now I'm joined by Senator Tom Tillis. Thank you so much for joining us today. When we talk about veterans issues, th this has really been a top priority for you while you've been in office. It has been, you know, for a variety of reasons. My father was a veteran and we're in a state that is about to surpass California as the most veterans of any any state. Only Texas and Florida will be ahead of us. And when you think about the fact that they have almost three times the population, it gives you an idea of just how many people up and down the street have served this nation. And we owe them a debt of gratitude, and I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we repay it. When we have that many veterans that we're dealing with, and you have the whole state to have in consideration, what kind of frustrations are you are you still hearing from them today well it, it, some of it can just be the bureaucracy it, it could be understanding how they can actually take advantage of the GI bill it could be I just spoke with uh, one of the spectrum employees about having to make three or four phone calls to get a, a veterans identification card that should only take one call so it's the bureaucracy it's the paperwork it's the timeliness those are the things that we focus on and then we're always working to try and find veterans who are not connected. And Loretta, that's the biggest challenge. Twenty veterans take their lives every day in this country. Twenty. Almost half of them have no connection to the VA whatsoever. We don't know if they ever did. So they could have transitioned out and they don't realize that there are all kinds of support that they should be able to take advantage of, that our office works really hard to do it for people in North Carolina. So what issues are we working on now? Is, is it now a, a money issue, making sure that we can keep the facilities up to par, or are there still policy problems? I think a lot of it right now, we, we implemented the Mission Act, and, and a, a key part, there were a lot of provisions in it, but the, the main thing that we want to do is put the power in the veterans' hands. So if you call a VA facility, and they cannot provide you a timely appointment, we want to give you the immediate option to go out into the private community if you choose to do that. Um, but we always, we always want to make sure that we maintain that relationship. That's the next thing that we need to do. If you go out of a VA facility, we want to make sure that we know what care you were given and that it's a part of your history so that when you come back into the VA, we have the full view of the patient so we can give them the best care. There's a number of things that we're doing, new scheduling systems, new electronic health records. It's going to be fully compatible with the Department of Defense so we can carry the information over and not lose it. Um, but then we want to take it to the next level. We, we want to understand when, when someone's serving, if you think about traumatic brain injury, uh, you think about concussions repeatedly over time, they, they, the soldier may not even know that they could potentially have a problem later on. We're, we want to capture information so that we may even be able to predict when someone's transitioning out that they could be at risk for an illness before they ever get ill so that we can intervene and give them care as quick as possible. How would you rate where we are today versus where we were just a few years ago? Well, you know, my friend Robert Wilkie, who worked uh, for me as my military advisor for three years and then went on to the Department of Defense and now Secretary of the VA, has taken the VA, it was 17th in the preferred places to work in the federal government. Now it's 6th. That occurred over a year. So a part of what we have are leaders that, for the, number one, thank the people who work in the VA because most of them are doing a great job. But we're also making sure that we hold people accountable when they're not. That's why whistleblower protections, the ability to get information from every level in the organization is really putting us in a position to continuously improve the VA. And a lot of people in Washington like to, to uh, take shots at the VA. But the reality is, as a, as a health care system that's one of the largest in the United States, they do fairly well. But... But they're not gonna, it's not going to be good enough to me until they do it extraordinarily well. Uh, but they, uh, they do a good job for the veterans. Their heart's in the right place. A lot of times when they run into challenges, it's because Congress fails to deliver the funding that they need. That's on us, and that's something I fight, uh, fight for every single day. Certainly an important group to make sure they're getting the health care they need. They sure do. Everything. Every benefit, every consultation, every crisis moment. Every interaction with the federal government with a veteran should be seamless and it should be respectful. And I, I ask any veteran, if they don't feel like they're getting the respect they deserve, the first phone call may be to the VA or federal government, and the next one needs to be to my office. Senator Tillis, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Loretta. And they